Hi, welcome back. In the first part, I explained how the coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination, R squared, can be used to measure the performance of parameter values in an optimization, and showed how this is done by applying these metrics to the equity curve. So next, we're going to take a look at the code to implement this in MQL5, although the principles, of course, could be translated to any programming language. Also note that all of the code I use today will be shared on GitHub, and to access that, you can use a link in the description below. Now, in the same way as all of the other performance metrics I've had coding tutorials on, the code I'm providing is not a fully functional trading EA because the code is just there to produce the performance metric that I'm talking about. And so the expectation, if you're going to use this, is that you would take the code from the example and implement those in your own expert advisor. Okay, so let's get into the code. Now, once again, I've decided to build on the code that I've produced in previous tutorials when I've talked about alternative performance metrics. And so here you can see the three metrics that I've covered before, the standard profit factor, the modified or the normalized profit factor, and the CAGR over mean drawdown. And so again, I've added this additional option now for the coefficient of correlation or the R value. And so moving down now to the input parameters, you can see I've set the default value as this new metric that we're going to calculate. Now, for previous metrics I've implemented, I've performed some sanity checks in the onInit function that just make sure that the position sizing parameter is appropriate for the performance metric that we're using. However, I'm not going to do that for this metric because I'm going to take the approach I explained in the previous part where I'm going to normalize the values from each of the trades. And so we're going to create a pseudo equity curve based on trade sizes all of the same size. And because of this, it doesn't matter if we're using a fixed position sizing model or a relative position sizing model. Now for this particular metric, there's no further processing that we need to undertake as the expert advisor runs in the backtester. All of the calculations are done at the end of the backtest. And so because of this, there isn't any code required in the onTick function. So if we move straight on to the onTester function, you can see I've added this additional condition here that whenever the custom performance metric that we're using is the coefficient of correlation, we'll call this function here. And just like the other functions we've done in the past, we're going to pass this particular variable by reference. And so as long as we set that in this function, the value will be available to us when we're returned to the onTester function. And just like with the other performance metrics, we're going to do a quick statistical significance check to ensure that we've got sufficient trades to give us that reliability and the number of trades in order to perform that check are returned from the coefficient of correlation function. Now, you'll remember me saying before, in order for this to work and for MetaTrader to use this value, as opposed to one of the out-of-the-box values, we must return the custom performance metric value from the onTester function, which you can see I do here. And so let's now take a closer look at this function in order to find out how that value is calculated. Okay. So, as I said before, what we now do is iterate through all of the trades that were generated as part of the backtest. And as we do that, we'll use a couple of arrays in order to store this pseudo equity curve that I spoke about. So this is an equity curve that would have been generated if every trade had had the same position size. And the two arrays we use in order to store that are these two that you see here. So the equity ID represents the x-axis and the cumulative normalized net profit array represents the equity or the y value in the calculation. So we initially size both of those arrays to just one cell and then populate the first values. And so the equity ID we use is equity ID 1, 
and the cumulative normalised net profit we set at the starting equity. So this is whatever deposit was used at the beginning of the backtest. Now you might be wondering why I'm using a double value for the equity ID when these will only have integer values. But I'll explain this in a moment when we get to the relevant function that requires a double value. So with those two arrays initialized, the next thing we do is select all of the deals from the deal history in the backtest. And then we iterate through each of those deals looking for all of the deal entry outs. And of course, it's these that provide us with the profit values for each of the trades. And so whenever we find one of these, we simply increment the number of equity values that we have and also calculate a value for the net profit. And of course, the net profit is after charges of swap and commission have been taken off. And because my broker deals with commission half on the entry and half on the exit of the trades, that's why I'm simply multiplying the out commission by two. But what we also ascertain at this point is what the trade volume was, i.e. the position size. And we need this, of course, to be able to normalize our net profit value. But before we store those, we simply increment the size of our two arrays and then populate our next equity value, which of course is the previous equity value plus the normalized trade profit. And to normalize it, we simply divide the net profit by the volume. And so by the time we've worked through all of those deals, we'll have an in-memory equity curve that's been normalized, which of course is what we need in order to calculate the Pearson R value. Now there are two ways in which you can do this next step. You can either do it manually yourself, and as I showed you in the previous part, the calculation can appear a little daunting, but in actual fact, the execution of that is relatively simple. So here we simply iterate through each of the equity values that we've already stored in the array. And as we go through that, we continually increase the value of the, the sum of the X values, the sum of the Y values, which of course are the equity values themselves, and then the sum of the product of those two, the sum of the square of the X's, and the sum of the square of the Y's. And you can see all of those calculations there. Then from that, using the equation you saw previously, we can calculate our denominator. And the reason we calculate that first is just to ensure that that's a non-zero value so that when we perform the next step of the calculation, we're not going to end up with a divide by zero. And that's it, that's your correlation coefficient calculated. And for a lot of people, they would prefer to do this calculation themselves so they know exactly how this is being performed. However, there is also a math library within MQL5 that you can also take advantage of if you'd prefer. And this means that you don't have to perform the calculation manually yourself. So if you ever want to use any of the functions from this library, then you must make sure that you include this MQH file at the top of your EA. And then one of the functions available within that library is the math correlation Pearson function. Now this function expects two arrays to be passed to it, which effectively represent the X value array and the Y value array. And so even if you are using this function, you will still need to go through the process of iterating through your trades to create those arrays. But once you have those, if you don't want to perform this calculation manually, you can simply pass those two array values into this function alongside another variable by reference. And this is the value that will get set by the function. Now this particular function returns true if it's successful and false if it isn't. And so as you can see here in this conditional statement, if this does return false, we're just going to set the correlation of coefficient to zero. Otherwise, it will remain set 
at the value that was passed in by reference. And so just for clarity, you wouldn't have both this section and this section in your code. You'd have one or the other. So all that remains for us to do now is to set our variable that was passed in by reference at the top of the function here with the value for the coefficient of correlation. And then that's accessible by the onTester function. We also return the number of equity values that we calculated when we iterated through the deals so that onTester can perform its statistical significance check. And that's it. We've now implemented our coefficient of correlation on the equity curve in order to produce a performance metric that we can measure the success of the various parameters in our optimization. So hopefully you now have all of the information you need to be able to try out this metric for yourself. I've placed all of the code on GitHub and there's a link right below in the video description. Please do remember to click the thumbs up if you've got value from this episode. And there's just one more thing I'd like to make you aware of. You'll remember that at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned a small piece of research that I had planned to undertake. And in this, I'm going to compare some commonly used performance metrics, including the ones that I've talked about in this and previous episodes. And I might also use profit factor, which is one of the better standard metrics in my view, and also the normalized version that I showed you how to calculate previously. And so alongside CAGR over mean drawdown and the coefficient of correlation that I covered this time, hopefully this will shed some light on which performance metrics actually perform the best at identifying the most robust parameters. And I don't know yet, but maybe one of them will work better when there are a low number of trades and statistical significance is maybe not so good while a different metric may well work better when you have a higher statistical significance. I guess we'll find out. And I'll be putting together a video in the Darwin X backtesting and optimization playlist where I'll talk through the details of my findings. Now, if you want to be notified when that video is released, then the easiest way is simply to subscribe to the Darwin X channel now, and you can do that from the button right below. And so that's it for today. And so stay safe and trade safe.